let's do the double pendulum. It's a pretty tough problem technically, but setting it up's not really that bad. Okay, so a double pendulum has some massless rod of length R1 with a mass M1, and then another one, another massless rod R2 connected to another mass M2. So this thing can swing around and do all sorts of cool things. Uh, it's like the pendulum with just one thing, but you got another pendulum on there, and that makes it double awesome. So I don't want um, I to, I really want to do this as an example of how you can solve a whole bunch of really complicated uh, Lagrangian problems by using Python. Uh, so let's just set this up and then we'll switch over to Python and I'll show you that. So in this system, I really have two degrees of freedom. I have these two angles, theta 1 and theta 2. And the idea of Lagrangian is to define the Lagrangian as kinetic energy T minus potential energy U. And then we can get equations of motion from the Euler-Lagrange equation. So I have two variables, so I'm going to have two equations. And one of them will say the partial of L with respect to theta 1 minus the derivative with respect to time of the partial of L with respect to theta 1 dot is 0 where this dot notation we use to represent the derivatives with respect to time. So theta 1 dot is the derivative of theta 1 with respect to t. Okay. Now, the problem is that I need to get kinetic and potential energy in terms of theta 1 and theta 2. And m1, m2, r1, r2, and there's also g in there too. We also have time. Okay. And maybe you could say, if I have a simple pendulum, you could use your intuition to get kinetic energy as one-half i omega squared, or something like that, where omega squared would be theta 1 dot squared. That's fine, okay? But what about this mass? Because you can't do that here. This mass, the position is defined relative to mass 1, which is really what makes Lagrangian mechanics so powerful that we can do things like that. But you can't then go ahead and say what the kinetic energy is in terms of theta 2. It's tough. So the answer is, always, almost always, the answer is to write the kinetic energy, let's call this T1, the kinetic energy for mass 1, is going to be 1 half the mass 1 times x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared. I know the kinetic energy in Cartesian coordinates. I know the derivatives in Cartesian coordinates and the velocity is pretty easy. So if I write everything in terms of Cartesian coordinates, I can, I can express the kinetic energy this way. And that's what we're going to do. So let's start with mass 1. So if I call this the origin, I can say x1 is uh, this distance, which is going to be r1 sine theta 1. So it's going to be r1 sine theta 1. And then y1 is going to be, well, if I go down, it's going to be negative r1 cosine theta 1. And then I could easily take the derivatives x dot and y dot and square them and add them together, and it's pretty easy. That's not a problem. And I'm not, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make Python do that. I, I, it's so simple. I can make Python do it. Now what about uh, t2? 1 half m2 x2 dot squared plus y2 dot squared. Now x2 and y2 are much more complicated because they depend on both theta 2 and theta 1. But it's not so bad to write it. I can say x2 is going to be, well, there's going to be this r2 sine theta term in there. And then I have to add in the x position of this. So it's going to be x1 plus r2 sine theta 2. And then y2 is going to be y1 minus r2 cosine theta 2. So you can see here, I can again take the derivatives. It's not that bad, right? If I know x1 and x1 dot, I can take the derivatives, and then I can put it all in here. It, it may get a little messy, and it's not too terribly bad, but it can be done. And then I can plug it over there. And then I can you find the potential. It's just going to be m1gy1 plus m2g y2. But all of these are in terms of theta 1 and theta 2, so when I plug it in over here, I can get the Lagrangian L equals T minus U in terms of theta 1 and theta 2. And that's what I'm going to do. And in fact, I have done this on paper. It's kind of a mess, but I did it. But this is so simple. We can just define this and then have Python do the symbolic algebra. So let's jump over to the computer, and I'm going to show you how to do it in Python. And, and just a note, I'm not an expert here. Okay. I forget how to do this all the time. And really, I'm making this video for me because I'm, I'm not really great at this. And some of the things you'll see, you, you may say, oh, you're doing it the wrong way, and that's fine. I expect that. 
Okay, I'm jumping over here to the computer. We're at the computer. Okay, so how I like to use um, Trinket or the Python or whatever you want to call it, GlowScript, uh, to, to code stuff in a web browser, and I'm going to do that. But there's no SymPy there. There's no symbolic algebra. So I have to use something else. So you can install Python and the SymPy module uh, on your computer, but you can also run it on Google. So this is Google Collaboratory, and you, if you log in with your Google account, you can have this. It's essentially the same thing as installing it on your computer, but it's running on Google, and it's really great because then it runs on an iPad. It runs on your phone, technically. I wouldn't do that, but, but here we are. So the idea is that we have these different cells right here, and we can type in Python code and run it, and it's actually running it, uh, I think it's running it on Google servers. Okay, so let's just get started. The first thing we need to do is to import the SymPy, the SymPy module. Uh, so let me just go ahead and do that. Import SymPy as SP. Okay, so a little bit bigger. That's bigger. So number one, I don't care how you pronounce S-Y-M-P-Y. SymPy? SciPy, SymPy, it doesn't really matter. We're all going to get along. When I import it, I want to import it as something. And it and this is just a good idea, right? Because if I have more than one module imported, I need to tell Python which model I'm taking each, each function from. So I'm going to call it SP. So if I saw anything I say SP dot, it'll say, oh, that's from the SymPy module. Now I'm only going to import SymPy. I'm not going to do the whole um, model here. I'm just going to do the, the symbolic math, and then we'll switch over to Python, the Glow script v Python. Okay, so now what you can do is you can click Run, and it will run that uh, module right here, that cell, or you can press Shift-Enter, and it's fine, and you see it's running. It takes time. It's not instantaneous because it's running on Google, I guess. It's taking longer than I thought, and it tells you how much it used and stuff like that, and that's fine. Okay. So now what we need to do is declare our variables. We need to tell SymPy what things are going to be variables and how are, should they be represented. So let me just go ahead and do this. Uh, t, uh, I'm going to T, R1, R2, M1, M2, uh, G. And these are all going to be of the type um, symbols. So I'm going to say sp.symbols. Oops. Uh, and then I need to say they are what? What? Are they, how are they can represent it? It's going to be T R one. You want to do it in the same order they had over there. R two uh, M two one M two. You'll notice I can do underscores here. If I do an underscore, then it's going to give it a subscript notation, which is what we want. And then G, and that's that. And just so you can see, if I just do R1 and run that, it gives see the nice little subscript. It's pretty okay. Next, uh, we need theta one and theta two. But theta one and theta two are going to be functions of time. So let's write it this way: uh, theta one, theta two, equals sp dot symbols uh, r theta one theta 2 and then they are going to be a the class sp dot function to tell it it's a function so how do you turn off this thing I don't like this thing escape maybe that's it okay so up here uh, the R says I think it from what I understand it says use raw text and then when I run these it will actually print the this the symbol theta which is really nice so if I do over here theta 1 if I, I call it theta 1 um, and it prints it as theta 1 it didn't do it why didn't it do it theta 1 r theta 1 let me get rid of this I did it before theta Two. Huh. Okay, so I do need the R there, but it did not. Class SP function symbols sim. Did I spell it wrong? Symbols data one data two. 
Huh. Why is it not parsing it? I'm not sure. Well, it's fine. We'll print theta 1. If I just do theta 1, that's theta 1. Huh. That's weird. It was working before. I, I It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we need to say theta 1 is a function of time. Right? And theta 2 is a function of time. Just like that. And then I need to define theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, theta 1 double dot, theta 2 double dot, and I can use the derivative function in SymPy. So I'm going to say theta dot 1, that's theta dot 1, is going to be the derivative, sp dot diff, of theta, I don't like that, theta 1 t. And let's just print theta dot 1. Let's see what that does. Okay, now it did it. I don't know why. Okay, so now you can see it is indeed printing the correct thing. Theta dot 2 is sp dot diff theta 2 t. Um, theta dd dot, that's going to be my double dot 1, is sp dot diff uh, theta dot 1 t. Right, it's the derivative of theta 1. And theta dot 2 is sp dot diff theta dot 2 t. Why? I wonder if I can get it to not do that. Let's see. Editing. Editor. There. Don't do that. Okay. Um, so what do I do now? Let's just let's just double. Let's just check. I like to check. Theta dd dot two. Run it. Okay. So it does. It gives me the second derivative of theta two with respect to time, which is what I want. Now I need to define my x1, y1, x2, y2, and all that. So x1 equals uh, r1 times sp dot sine theta1. So you'll notice that I told it to turn that off. Didn't I? Editor. Automatically close brackets, enter key, accept suggestions. How about that? Turn that off. I don't want any suggestions. So sine is not built into Python. So I need to call it from uh, the SymPy module. Y1 is negative R1 times sp dot cosine theta 1. Uh, X2 is x1 plus R2 times sp dot sine theta 2. I really don't like it when it does that. Edit. View. Insert. Runtime. Tools. Help. Okay, well let's just let's just plow through. If I type fast, it won't come up. Um, and then y2 is y1 minus r2 times sp dot cosine theta2. Okay. Now I can define my kinetic energy. So let's just do it as two parts. Uh, T1 equals one half times m1 times the derivative of x1 with respect to time. So it's going to be sp dot diff x1 t squared plus sp dot diff y1 t squared. Okay, let me print that, run that statement so you can see what it looks like. And it seems like it's okay. Um, right here we have a problem in that... Uh, I have that 0.5 instead of 1 half. It, it will work fine that way, but if you want it to be 1 half, which we do, we can say sp.rational 1, 2, and run it. And now you'll see it has the 1 half there, so that's cool. Now I need t2, so that's going to be actually the same thing. I'm just going to copy all that. Except there's going to be m2 x2, y2. And so it it's fine, right? I have x2 and y2 defined in terms of x1 and y1. Python don't care. t2, watch. It's like, fine, do it. Do it. I don't care. It doesn't care. And now I can go ahead and uh, define, let's define u as m1 times g times y1 
plus m2 times g times y2, and then L is going to be T1 plus T2 minus U. And then let's just print L. So there, that's what we get. Okay, now you can actually simplify that. I can say L dot simplify, simplify parentheses and run it. And it will do some, uh, make things more uh, manageable and you get that. But it doesn't matter. Who cares? I don't care what it is right now. I do not care. I just want the Lagrangian. Okay, so we have the Lagrangian. Now we need to apply the Euler-Lagrange equation twice, right? I need to do the Euler-Lagrange equation twice. So down here, let's start in a new cell. I'm going to call the first one LE1, and it's going to be equal to, uh, I'm going to type in the, at the all the stuff before the zero. It's going to assume it's equal to zero. So it's going to be sp.diff L with respect to theta 1, right? That's the partial of L with respect to theta 1, minus sp.diff the time derivative of sp dot diff l theta dot one t. So you see that's that that's that two part derivative right there. That's this is the derivative of l with respect to theta one dot, and then I take the derivative of that with respect to time. So that all that is equal to zero, and that's exactly what I want. Now I need to do that again for l two for the second one. So I'll just copy that, and all I'll have to do is change these to twos just because of the way I did it. So I have theta 2, and then I have uh, the derivative of L with respect to theta 2 dot, and that's that. Okay, now if you want, you can look at it. It doesn't really matter. Le2, let's just do 2 uh, and see what it looks like. It's getting a little messy, right? It's getting a little messy, and that's fine. So I have these two equations that are equal to zero and they both have a theta two, they, they have a theta two double dot and a theta one double dot in both of them. So you have to solve two equations to an to unknown, two equations to unknowns. So I said that, yeah. So we can do that. So the way to do that is to say, uh, use the solve function. So I'm gonna say solves is my, the name of my solutions, solutions is gonna be equal to sp dot solve. And I wanna give it what, what equations I'm gonna give it. So I'm gonna give it a list le1, le2, that's my list. And then what variables do I want to solve for? I want to solve for theta double dot one, theta double dot two. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay, so if I do that, it's going to give me a list of solutions. And so I should have two solutions, one for theta one dot, double dot and one for theta two double dot. So let's just print out one and I'm gonna go ahead and simplify it. No, let's not. So let's say solves of for theta one double dot, theta double dot one, uh, and I'm just run that. It takes a little bit of algebra, so it's gonna take some time. And you see, it's a mess, it's a mess. I don't want to do that on my own, okay? Um, I can simplify that. Look how big that is. So I can just do dot simplify, but I really don't even care about the answer. Simplify and then run it. It's not so bad. Okay. See, that's not too terribly bad. That's, that's okay. But I have the solutions, and that's the most important thing. I have theta one dot, double dot, and I have theta two double dot. And now, once I have those, I need to get them so I can use them in, in GlowScript vPython. So let's go ahead and print those out. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say print uh, theta double dot one, because that's what I'm calling it, is equal to comma. This is going to print that text statement. Solutions of theta one dd dot one. And I want to simplify it, dot simplify. Now, doing this is actually going to print, it's not going to parse it. It's not going to make it as uh, put in equations and stuff, which, which, uh, which is what I want. I don't want that in there. Uh, and then I want to do the same thing for theta 2. Again, just change this to 2. And change this to 2. Okay, and let's run that. Okay, so there's theta one double dot. It's an equation, and still getting there with the other one. So now, now we're gonna do a little, a little crazy stuff. I'm gonna copy that. 
okay? And you'll notice here that I have R underscore one. I have uh, slash theta underscore one, and I don't want that. I want R one, I want theta one. And there's probably a way to do this in Python. I just, I just don't really care to figure it out. Uh, and then we have things over here like derivative, okay? So what I'm gonna do is copy this, and now I'm gonna go to my text editor, right there. I just have a plain text editor, and I'm gonna paste it. Okay, I don't really care what it looks like. Uh, can I zoom in? There, it's giant. And then I'm going to put a return between here just so I can separate them. So I want to replace like R1 with R1. So I'm going to say uh, oh, find and replace. So replace. I'm going to find R underscore 1 and I'm going to replace it with R1, not R exclamation r1 replace all okay replace all there so now I no longer have that I can do the same thing for m2 I can go through and do the whole thing and that's boring so I already did it so I already went through and just did a final replace and yeah I know it's dumb it's childish it's it's juvenile it's all those things but it works right and so I don't really care so but now I have theta one double dot as a function I have theta two double dot as a function and I can use the Euler method to model the motion of this so let's jump over to the paper and and re-describe the Euler method for theta one double dot and then the same thing's true for theta two double dot so let me just jump over there real quick uh, and remind you okay so if I have theta one double dot And I break the motion into small time steps. Let's say delta t is 0 0.01. During that time step, I can assume that theta 1 double dot is constant. So that's going to be, I, if that's true, then I can write this as theta 1 dot delta theta 1 dot delta t. That's a change in theta 1 dot with respect to time. And that's just going to be theta, well, I'm going to call it theta 1, theta 1 2 dot minus theta 1 1 dot over delta t. So this is the uh, theta one dot at the end of the time interval, that's theta one dot at the beginning of the time interval, but I can solve this for theta one two dot is theta one one dot plus theta one double dot delta t. So at the end of the time interval, I can find the new angular velocity, assuming that I knew the velocity at the beginning. So I do need to know initial conditions. And then when I go to the next time interval, I can just do it again. Every time I can calculate theta one double dot, use that to update this, because this does change. So we can change it during each interval. And then I can do the same thing, assuming theta, I'll say theta one two dot is constant, and that's delta theta one with respect to time, which is theta one two minus theta one one over delta t. So theta one two equals theta one one plus theta one two dot delta t. And it's one two because I just calculated that at the end of the time interval. And then I go back up here and do the whole thing again. Right? So I calculate theta double dot using the equation I got from SymPy. I use that to update the velocity theta dot. I use that to update theta. And then I do the same thing for theta two to double dot. Okay. And then once I do that, I can model everything. So this is the Euler method, and I'm going to show you how to do that in, in Python. I actually want to model the motion of this, too, so I don't want to just have the, the thing. Okay, so let's jump back over here to the computer. Jumping to computer. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to copy both of these. Well, let me show you the code first. So if I go over here, I already started some code. Um, make it much bigger for you because I know you like big. Uh, so this is just a single pendulum, and I was working on it for another project. Uh, uh, bigger. Yeah. Hopefully that's big enough. And let's just run this, and I'll go over the code, because I need to change this so it works with a double pendulum. So here I have a pivot, which is just a sphere. There's my mass, and then this string is a cylinder. Okay. And then I model the motion of it. So I have, I change everything to R1, M1, theta1, theta1, double dot, theta2, dot, dot, all that stuff. Um, so there's my constants, there's T, DT. I have my initial theta1, my initial theta1 dot, I need both of those. Uh, pivot is just the point to draw. Uh, I calculate X1 and X2, I make the mass, give it a location X1 and 
y1, I mean x1, y1, and there's my string. And then down here, I calculate theta double dot for a simple pendulum. And then I use that to update theta, that's theta double dot, I update theta double dot, I update theta, and then I recalculate x and y so that I can move the mass. Web v Python, GlowScript, wants to draw things with Cartesian coordinates. So I go back to Cartesian coordinates to draw it. And here I move the mass, and then I move the string. Okay, so all I need to do is to add a second mass, a second string. So let's go up here and just start adding stuff. So first thing, theta 2 equals, let's put this at 80, 80 degrees, I don't know why, pi divided by 180. And theta, two, d, theta dot 2 is 0. Uh, I need my x2, y2, so x2 is, oh, I need r2. So let's see, r2 is going to be equal to, let's say, 0 0.3, and m2 is 0 0.2. I'm just picking stuff. You can change these, and you should, because it's fun. So x2 is going to be equal to x1 plus r2 times sine theta2. It's the same thing we had before. Uh, y2 is y1 minus r2 times cosine theta2. And now I can make mass 2 and string 2. So mass 2 is going to be equal to, let's just copy this thing. And change it to 2, 2, 2. Um, radius is the same. I'll, let's make this one cyan just because it'll look different. I don't know. I like cyan and yellow. They show. And this make trail, I put... Uh, it leaves a trail, and that only retains the, the last 10 calculations, uh, and that way it kind of leaves that, that ghosting trail, which is kind of cool. Okay, and let's do string2. I'm going to have to type this one out. String, so in Python, um, in GlowScript v. Python, this, the cylinder has two, three properties. One, position, and that's the location of one end of the cylinder. Then axis is a vector from that point to the other end, and then you have radius. So it's a cylinder. The position for this one is not going to be pivot. It's going to be mass 1.pos. It's going to be starting from mass 1. And then the axis is going to be to the end, which is mass 2, mass 2.pos, minus the beginning, mass 1.pos. And then the radius is the same. 0 0.002. Let's go ahead and run that. That's like to make sure things are working correctly. Okay, so it didn't move. I never updated it, but it, it's there. So it seems okay. Okay, so now down here, I need to change my calculation for theta 1 double dot because that's not it anymore. That's a simple pendulum. So I'm going to delete that. And now I'm going to go to my text editor and I'm going to copy all this. I'm just going to copy it. You could type it in manually, but, but why? I don't need to do that. There. All that mess. It's just a mess. But I understand where it came from. And let's do the same thing for theta double dot 2. Go over to the text editor. Copy this. And if you think this is, like I said, juvenile, that's fine. I do a bunch of juvenile stuff all the time. OK. Now, this statement, theta 1 double uh, dot 1, doesn't need to change. It's the same. I need to do the same thing for theta 2. Theta dot 2 equals theta dot 2 plus theta dd dot 2 times dt. And then I need to do the same thing for theta 2. Theta 2 equals theta 2 plus theta dot 2 times dt. And then I need to calculate x2 and x y2. x2 equals x1. I, I can do that. I can say in respect to x1. Plus r2 times sine theta 2. I just changed theta, so it's going to change. And then y2 equals y1 minus r2 times cosine theta 2. We're chugging along here. OK, mass 1. I moved it. Now I need to move mass 2. Mass 2 dot pos is vector x2, y2, 0. I need to move the strength. I actually need to do two things with string 2. I need to move the location because mass 1 moved, and I need to move the axis. So string 2.pos equals mass 1.pos, and then string 2.axis equals 
mass2.pos minus mass1.pos. And that should work. It may not work, but it should. Let's save it. And I will give you the code. And now let's run it. Check that out. I'm pretty excited. I mean, that wasn't too hard, right? Because we we did the, the hard, the hard stuff is knowing what to do. Doing it isn't hard, right? That's why Python did it. It's SymPy. And then we can use those solutions and import them in here. And yes, you can solve those differential equations all in Python. I just didn't want to do it. Okay. Um, I like to make this, th it's actually a 3D model. See, look at that. Uh, we actually should make, we should make a, a 3D double pendulum so it can move in three dimensions for each one instead of being fixed in a plane. And, and the basic idea is the same. Uh, and I'm going to go back to that code in just a second. Let's see. Let's change up here the initial conditions. Uh, let's make it, let's put this one at uh, 120 degrees. Let's just see. Let's get some crazy stuff happening here. I want it to spin around. Okay, I need it higher. Okay, higher. So 150. I want it to get like chaotic y stuff. Okay, well, anyway, that, that's pretty good. I'm pretty excited with this. You can get it to flip around and do all those cool spinny stuff. Just play with the initial conditions. Uh, and you pick the initial conditions that you like the best. Now, going back over here, what if I wanted to do some other Lagrangian problem? I mean, I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm still going to define all my variables. I'm going to have my generalized coordinates. I'm going to have my uh, generalized coordinates related to Cartesian coordinates. That's the key. And then I'm going to write my Lagrangian. After that, I mean, you're just good to go. You're just going to do the same thing. We're going to define the Euler Lagrange equation to solve for the differentials, and then we're going to solve two equations, two unknowns, and you're done. Okay, you're done. Every single Lagrangian problem can be done this way. And so it is an important tool. I mean, you should be able to do it on paper, especially for simple systems. You know, because I can make a mistake and not even know if I'm correct. You, you can check. I could plot the kinetic energy of the whole system or the total energy and see that it's constant. Um, but... You know, you can't just completely rely on this. But for complicated problems, no one wants to do all this stuff. No one's got time for that. Not you, not me. I did have time for it because I did this video. You remember that, right? Okay. So I'll post uh, a link to the, the, the trinket code. Um, I guess I can, I'm not sure if I can post a link to this. I'm not good with Google Collab, uh, Collab. Uh, but... If you have any questions, let me know down, down downstairs in the comments. Uh, but other than that, I'll talk to you later.